consulted mediums all the way through the war. The, the, there was a medium, uh, I knew him loosely, but I knew him, people who knew him very, very well, and that was Joe Benjamin. Mm-hmm. He was a good medium, very good entertainer, a very funny man up on the, on the platform there. And Joe Benjamin was one of the, the Jewish underground during World War II. Okay. And, um, as I say, very, uh, a very entertaining man. And he knew Churchill quite well. And he, he would often sort of say he was, he was one of Churchill's favourite mediums. But before him, there was a guy called William Roy. Now, William Roy was one of the cleverest fakes ever. And Churchill was known to be thrown into deep depression when he found that, that William Roy had been faking. Yeah, when yeah. you're making uh, decisions, um, a government top-level decisions uh, uh, of a country at war, and you're taking your um, inspiration and your guidance from a guy who's a fake medium, you know, it's, um, it's not very uh, confidence-inspiring. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, what, uh, what uh, you... This man's name was William Roy. William... Remember, you mentioned Helen Duncan. Mm-hmm. Churchill went to see her twice in prison, um, hmm. Helen Duncan. Really? But Chur- yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But Churchill, he was a very devious guy. He would often play both ends against the middle. He would condemn it publicly, and yet privately, he'd he'd often sort of be part of it. Well, o- always, and we can see kind of that that happening happening today. I don't know if it's it's on the same level, so to speak. But but uh, we can look at, uh, for instance, a, a, a quote unquote Christian here, like George W. Bush, but oh, yet yeah. he belongs to you know the. Uh, the skull and bones order, and they're really into yeah. a lot of occult stuff. What's the okay. connection there? How 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 do, does that work? Yeah. You know. Well, that you could make the same point about Tony Blair. Sure. I mean, if you cannot be received into the Catholic Church, and you you cannot receive the sacrament if you have what they call mortal sin on your soul. Mm. To kill someone is mortal sin. To kill over a million people is a million mortal sins. And yet, Tony Blair has been received into the Catholic Church, I find the whole situation a farce, you know. Hmm. If we were to say, well, Adolf Hitler has turned up at the, uh, you know, we'd, say, we'd be up in arms, and yet it's all right for Tony Blair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, and again, I mean, uh, I, I have nothing against it, and, and I don't mind, but uh, it's been said that it was down with, uh, with Sherry Blair again. Uh, performing some Maya ritual down, uh, you know, in, yeah. in Maya country, South America or whatnot. Uh, and I mean, for, for me personally, I have no problem with that. But for those who, who are Christians, they, they could see, kind of look upon that and say, well, what, what's going on here? Especially now, as you say, when he's kind of con- converted to Catholicism, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, m- my problem is the dishonesty. If they were to say, look, we're going to go, we're going to roll about in the mud, we're going to worship these lizards and, and get drunk, I'd say, well, fair enough, you know. But they don't, you see. Sure. Um, it comes out, and some of the private lives of some of these politicians, they don't bear close scrutiny. Yeah. I would rather they say, look, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit sort of twisted, you know, but, but sort of bear with me, I'm a good politician, you know. <laughs> but when they live a lie, um, this is what I find, um, uh, it sticks in my craw a bit, do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Well, exactly. I, I agree with you, Jerry. You're, you're totally on. Uh, you're totally right. Because, but I guess uh, again, the question is: if they would be honest about this thing, uh, would they end up in the positions they they would be, or would they be uh, scoffed or you know scorned by by the, the the public because they they're doing something like this? What do you think? Uh, I don't know. During the Cold War, the KGB used to spend an awful long time looking for politicians who had um, guilty secrets. Now, when Harold Wilson was Prime Minister, there were 13 members of the Labour, um, 13 Labour MPs who were being blackmailed by the Soviets. Right? Mm. Now, normally this was sort of for sexual indiscretions or whatever, you know. Um, but I think if a man is open about his sexuality, um, then the, the blackmailable thing it goes out the window. You can't blackmail him. Hmm. But as soon as you have secrets, then you are vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you're onto something there, and I, and I think you're right, because it seems to be in many cases that that is one thing uh, that they manage to, to do with people. They, they, they probably, who knows, they might get them into some kind of very uncomfortable situation or, or, you know, in regards to they, they videotape them while, while they do drugs or are with a prostitute or whatnot, but then they can hold that against them, you know? Yeah. Well, here in England, Heinrich, uh, a few months ago, we, we had a, um, a Lib Dem MP and he came on the television and he, he 
made a confession. He said, look, he said, I, I've been dallying with a couple of rent boys, he says, and he says, the way I am, he says, and blah, blah, blah. And the public said, well, he's been honest about it. Mm. He's been up front, you know, and he didn't lose any votes. But had he tried to lie and suppress it and, and so on, I think that it would have been very damaging for him. Hmm. You know? So, the, so you're saying that that with his own honesty there, it 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 worked. I think his his honesty stood him in good stead. But yeah. but what if, and and a lot of people have been saying this, but what if the 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 stuff that that some of these people are doing are so awful? I mean, what I'm talking about here is that they potentially are, uh, they're abusing children, uh, they're into other rituals that are more sacrificial in nature, or whatnot. Who knows how? Again, how 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 far this might go but that that is something that never be would be you know uh you know, how honest they would be about this the, i mean the people would never and should never accept something like that you know yeah 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 uh, yeah, yeah the, i think you're right there's probably a sliding scale of of what is permissible and, and perhaps what isn't you know? sure well exactly it is and and uh yeah again who, who knows i mean there's uh there's certainly kind of uh Anecdotes from people that are, have been in, involved in, in this kind of in these things there have been eye, eyewitnesses. Uh, uh, people from you know Kathy O'Brien to to others have have been reporting about this and, and tying yeah. again a lot of famous uh, names in there, politicians, uh, you know. So who knows have again? Of, have you heard of the Kinkora Boys Home? Uh, no, no, doesn't ring a bell. Well, during the troubles in Ireland, there was a boys' home called the Kinkora Boys' Home. And our security services, they knew that certain IRA men were using these boys in this home, and they let it go on hmm. so that they could monitor the situation, and they could then say to them, look, you will come to the peace table, or this information is going to come out. Now, there's two schools of thought here, Henry. Mm-hmm. There are those that say it's wrong, they should have stopped it right at at the, at the beginning. Sure. And there are those that say, well, by allowing it to go on, they have stopped the greater evil of the bombings. Hmm. And, you know, I, I don't know what the, the truth is, or maybe it's a mixture of both, hmm. the, the correct way. But we had this dilemma whereby the country was divided over what should have been the, the right attitude to take. Hmm. So perhaps it's a deeper issue than, than I originally in, envisaged in this, do you know what I mean? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, for me. I mean, I would. It has to stop right away. That's that's how I view yeah. upon it, you know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah that's my yeah. my take. I, I've been involved in counselling for for a long time, and, and I would agree. Mm. But wiser people than me have said, "Hey, you know, you don't know the whole story, blah blah blah, you know, and look at what we've stopped and all the rest of it." You know what I mean? So I, I, I keep an open mind, you know. Hmm. Yeah. I think. I respect everybody's opinion. Sure. Um, you know. Sure. Well, I, I, I guess that I don't set the the collective over the the individual, meaning that even if if more people were kind of saved from something or whatnot than than an individual, I, I don't I, I can't justify that in any way. If something, you have to take take every issue at you know at the instance that you spot it or see it and, and stop it right there and and whatever the consequence might be after that, then you have to mm. you know deal with that mm. then basically. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah, there is a word. It's called sip and haft, and, and um, it means to sip the punishment slowly. And it's it's to do with collective punishment and collective guilt. Mm-hmm. It's like um, when something happens, some awful tragedy in the paper, and we read it, and we all feel a little bit of that guilt. We all partake of the the sadness. We we all sort of part of it for a moment. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I see what you mean. Um, okay, you know what? I, I want to spend a few minutes here before before we begin to round things up here for this uh, second segment and talk a little bit more about uh, your interest in palmistry because this would yeah. be interesting just to to get a brief overview of this. And I know that you mentioned before we began our first segment that you actually had been looking into uh, let's see here for the um, for a magazine, the Oracle magazine, uh, uh, regarding uh, Obama, uh, Barack Obama and, and Hillary Clinton, I, right? Yes, yeah, yep. What, so what did you find? What what happened when you looked at their hand? And how did you do that, by the way? <laughs> well, I um, I write for quite a few magazines. I'm often approached for sort of articles, but, but 
um, Oracle magazine in America, they they said to me, would I look um, at their hands because they were both handing, holding their hands up for the papers there, mm. um, and and just tell them a bit about the uh, their characters. Um, so I, I've done that. There's there's an issue coming out, um, I think, in March in Oracle, whereby uh, um, my findings are, are coming out in that. Mm-hmm. But um, Palm Street's a very deep subject. Sure. Um, and um, I've looked into it and I've done sort of studies for, for hospitals, um, for the police, uh, um, and for various, uh, oh, even uh, the intelligence organisations. I've got a couple of um, uh, um, psychological uh, analysis and, uh, um, and prognosis um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, intelligence services in, in a couple of uh, magazines. Yes, yeah, so I've written quite a bit about it. That's probably my, my, top, um, my top subject is, is probably palm. So that's what I'm best known for mm-hmm. um, throughout the world, you know. How, so how would you explain that this um, that that this works? I mean, what what is it in in that that makes this um, you know d- doable, so to speak? Okay, well, um, there are two there are two schools of thought. You have what's called the intuitive palmists, who work by psychometry. They will touch, you know. You've seen so many people who will touch a watch or a ring, and they'll tell you about it. There are people that use that technique on your hands. And there are those who will say that just as there is the correct place for the nose on your face, so there is the correct place for, for each line on your hand, and any deviation from that will be of special significance, which mm-hmm. can be uh, documented and and, uh, and so on. So, um, as I say, I realised I could do this at, palmistry, at uh, primary school, um, and I used to sort of read kids' hands in the playground. Mm-hmm. So what I did uh, as I got older, I, I studied uh, psychology and philosophy and various religions and all sorts of stuff um, to, to sort of to back it out yeah? and there's a lot of sort of medicine and sort of stuff that that um, uh, medical sort of um, predispositions and stuff that all shows in the hand you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, yes I, I might get people sort of approach me and they might email me handprints and they'll say you know, can you um, have a look at this and uh, um, and that's what I do sure One, uh, anyone can look at your hand and they can make predictions about the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't know if that's right or wrong. But if someone can tell you about how you came into the world, if they can if they can date and time every major event that's ever happened to you in the past, mm-hmm. then you've got to say, well, if he's right about that, it's, it's odds on he's going to be right about the future. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, I, I do concentrate a lot on the past because the person we are now is all our experiences that we've digested up to the present point. Sure. And then we use the present point as a, a jumping off uh, a point into the future. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for, and remember that um, even a doctor will he will tell you a future. He will um, give you a medical prognosis. He will say to you that if you keep eating or drinking the way you are, then in five years' time X, Y, and Z will happen. Mm. And the, that's only fortune telling, really, but in, in a, a, a more presentable context. Mm. <laughs> yeah, interesting perspective. So, I mean, w- do you want to share with us a little bit about what you saw uh, in regards to Hillary and Obama, or is that kind of exclusive for uh, Oracle? Well, uh, it, it's funny, but there is, there is what's called patient confidentiality. If I'm, if I'm seeing a person with a lot of problems, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't talk about it. But, but yeah, Hillary and Obama, I wasn't impressed with, with um, Hillary now, <laughs> and I've read quite a few palms since then, so... Um, it, it, it's not uppermost in my mind, but okay. certainly with Obama there, um, he is a complex character there. Um, he has, um, believe it or not, quite a lot of low self-esteem. A lot of the most driven people are often those who, who lack confidence. Sure. And it's what's called a, a compensation. It's a compensatory factor where they, they drive themselves all the harder. Yeah. You know? hmm. But um, with, with all of these politicians, Henrik, I mean, you know yourself, are they... They get bought. You know? Sure, they, sure. They get bought. They get people who will, um, uh, but, big money people, and they'll say, well, I'll back you, but when you get into power, mm. this is what you're going to do. It, yeah. it, and it, it's always been the way. Exactly. In regards to, to palmistry, is is this something that could stand out, meaning that you could see that there are kind of a, uh, the, the, they lack the integrity or they're, you know, in, in some other way, you know, deceiving themselves or others? Yes. Could it be seen? Oh, 